Hello there guys, and welcome back to Rebuilding Hitson, and in today's episode we were supposed to have a uh, match against Hereford, but unfortunately that match was rearranged due to a cup, cup, cup competition commitment. So then I was going to decide, I decided to go and do the uh, next match, which was a game against St. Neots, which is actually a local derby to us, but unfortunately that game was rearranged as well because of another cup competition commitment. So today we're actually going to be playing one of our rivals, or our rivals from last season, uh, AFC Kempston, that we... Um, that went, came up with us from the uh, Southern League Division One Central. I think, yeah, that's that's exactly what the, that's that's what the league was called. But before we get into that game, which is actually a big game in terms of the league tables, as you can see right there, only one point between us at the moment, and yeah, it kind of has big repercussions when it comes to whether we're going to be uh, under threat from relegation. But since you were last with us, which was the uh, unfortunate one 0 defeat at home to Dagenham Redbridge, I kind of reflected on that result. And I thought that wasn't too bad, considering that Dagenham and Redbridge are a professional team and they are challenging to get into the Football League. So I th don't think we did ourselves any harm by only conceding just, just the one goal. I just thought we maybe we could have done a little bit better on the day. But it's one of those things, I guess. But we got a massive amount of money from that tie anyways. So looks looks like myself and the players also put their uh, that game behind them as they went out to play AFC Dunstable away in the Southern League Cup second round and won the game 4-2, which was absolutely fantastic. Great play from uh, two goals from Callum Frew and two goals from Marshall Couture sealed the tie with six minutes remaining being 4-0 up. They then, Dunstable got then, sorry, AFC Dunstable then got two consolation goals through Jermaine Hall and Glody Bange, but that wasn't enough and there wasn't enough time for them to come back into the match to uh, send it to extra time or anything like that. So we advanced into the uh, next round of the cup competition. We then followed four. Go we then scored four goals again away from home. This time in the league away at Redditch, which was a game that I targeted in the last episode to win because of because of the league position that Redditch were in. And as you can see, uh, Kevin Carrillo started off proceedings with a 27 minute penalty. Mikulides then made it uh, two 0 Javier Roberts then pulled one back for Redditch, which made it a little bit interesting. But then Marshall Gutung with another two goals on the 85th and 90th minute to make it 4-1 and three points for ours in the end and that was a big win for us with regards to the uh, league table. We then unfortunately though lost at home to uh, Stratford and I, to be honest I was really really upset and disappointed with this result considering the fact that we dominated the stats, 13 shots, 6 on target, we just couldn't score and, having, and I decided just to go for it to see if I could try and get a late winner but unfortunately that kind of backfired at us as they went down the other end because we'd committed too many players forward. Taylor Coll Collins was through on goal and he slotted it past keeper and one of their only one of their two shots on target and snatched all three points away from us from this game. So from a massive high of winning 4-1 away at Redditch, it was a massive low from losing losing this game in the 91st minute against a team I thought we should have really won against. But yeah, it's one of those things. We then had a um, crazy FA Trophy uh, uh, first qualifying round match against Faversham and that was is quite similar to the uh, 1874 Northwich game in that we're away in the uh, first game and the fact that Faversham were actually dominant, dominating us in terms of the overall stats in possession shots, shots on target but the, we managed to somehow get out there with a draw after uh, Ryan Williams scored an equaliser after 55 minutes following uh, Charlie Robertson's uh, opener for Faversham which meant that the uh, tie had to be uh, taken to a replay, which we managed to win 2-0 in the end. That was a, it was absolutely important that we got this win. Ryan Williams scored again against uh, Faversham, but then Alex Dale missed a penalty. That was Bills' third penalty save of the season. So we've done pretty well on that front with regards to uh, penalty saves. I don't think we had any penalty saves at all in, in, in last season's campaign. So to have three penalty saves already is absolutely fantastic. Marshall Tung then wrapped up the points, or wrapped up the win, in the 92nd minute and we advanced into the uh, next round of the cup. We then had back-to-back -back games, away games against Leamington and unfortunately for us we lost both of them. This, firstly the uh, league game away from our uh, league game we lost 3-0. Shiraz Khan made it 1-0 after 12 minutes then Ryan Rowe with two goals in the space of four minutes pretty much put the tie beyond us. Labros Mikulides then decided to do something stupid and get a two, get sent off for a two footer tackle which has resulted in him being suspended up until the next game after this live combo that we have against AFC Kempston. So I find him a week's wages because of that, because of the fact that he's going to be he's been out for a week or so, a week or so, and he's not playing for any. Or he's not he's getting paid to not play. So I thought 
it was fair enough to actually fine him because he's not going to get uh, he's not getting get any game time for that week. So yeah, they yes they had a uh, player sent off as well via a second bookable offence, but the title again was already done by that point of the uh, game. In the uh, League Cup version, in League Cup game, we unfortunately we weren't able to um, overturn that uh, result that we had at, in the league, but we were a little bit closer. We uh, Ryan Rowe unfortunately scored two two more goals against us. Simeon May pulled one back in seven, inside 79 minutes, and I thought we could have got back into the game and uh, forced extra time, but unfortunately for us, we weren't able to do so, and we were knocked out of the uh, League Cup. We then, however, had a uh, crazy, in the last the last game before we played the AFC Kempston game, we had a crazy FA Trophy match away at Nantwich Town. And I think, hopefully, the momentum we got from this game will then transfer to what, we, what we're playing today. But as you can see, based off the stats, in the first half, we didn't have a shot a shot in the entire game. Natwich had all the shots and were pretty would deserve to actually be in front, but they were unable to get past. Oh, they were unable to uh, find a way through. However, everything changed in the second half. Very early on, Marshall Gutung gets sent off for a uh, elbow for a, that was that was a straight red card, unfortunately. So we were down to ten men after 46 minutes. Then, just as I bring on Aiden Glide, who's actually back from injury. Um, he then comes up and scores following a defensive error by Natwich Town, which puts us 1-0 up after our only only shot of the game. Then, Adi Osufua then gets sent off for us in the 61st minute for a second bookable offence, which means we were down to nine men, and we just had to, we had to then make drastic changes when it came to the tactic to ensure we still had a back four available in the end, because we had to, I think we had to bring on... Um, yeah, we had to bring on Ellis Miles for one of our midfielders. So we pretty much had no midfield, no defensive midfielders or anything to uh, cover any of our players. But it's one of those things, really. And we just we just hung on. And then down the other end, we then had a shot, our second shot of the game, which was all in a corner, on which Jack Rutteridge then f followed the uh, tapped in inside 89 in the 89th minute to seal an unbelievable victory away at Natwich Town. I was just completely dumbfounded how as to how we managed to do that. I guess uh, what it swings and roundabouts considering what happened in the Stratford game. If I was the Natwich Town boss, I would be absolutely furious like I was in the Stratford game. So it's nice to see that some of the uh, bad luck um, doesn't goes the uh, AI's way rather than just our way the whole time. So without further ado, if we actually have a quick look at the league table, you did got, you guys did have a quick glimpse of it before we had a look at the fixtures. But as you can see, we have dropped down to 18th place at the moment, and that's mainly because of the fact that again. We've got games in hand over everyone else, and they've been playing more games because of our cup commitments. But, fingers crossed, if we can get a good win today against AFC Kempston, that will put us into a, a solid mid-table once again, given our goal difference is a lot better than some of these other teams around, the, for example, Paul and Dunstable, if we end up drawing the game. But, I'm, I'm targeting a win today because the, the AFC Kempston are just behind us in the league, and they've been on a bit of a bad run of form recently, so I'm hoping we can get... Um, the a big res a good result today after back-to-back uh, -back lead defeats. It would kind of be nice to uh, end that little uh, poor run that we've been, that we've been on in the league. We we'll just have to wait and see what happens here. As you can see, this is the um, starting eleven we're we're going to go for. Also, we have, did sign a new player, Josh Dawkins. I did overspend, I think, a little bit on his wages. As you can see, there two hundred and thirty pounds per week. But the thing was, based on his star rating, he was better than. Justin May, and I needed that depth at attacking mid left in case Justin May did go down with an injury. And it says he's a good player for most Southern Premier Division sides, so fingers crossed we will be able to um, get him into the team and um, he'll be able to uh, contribute in the uh, best possible way. We're actually going to give him a start today because I think it will be nice to uh, try and uh, get him more involved into the team because he didn't have a great, the greatest of debuts, unfortunately, for him. Um, we're also playing Gluck to keep taking coming. We're, starting glider on the bench because he's still got fitness test problems so I don't really want to have a uh, another injury for him after he's been out for a quite a long time long period of the season already and we kind of need to protect him right now we also have a couple of suspensions as well so that's why we've got a little bit of a uh, makeshift back four with uh, uh, Ellis Miles playing at right back but it looks like we've got Harding and Utteridge and Carrillo who are pretty much first choice center back first choice left back and center backs uh, Utteridge has sign finally started to uh, play a couple of good games so I'm hoping he can continue that momentum into this match against AFC Kempston 
So, without further ado, let us actually get on with the game. I just want to quickly check if there's anything else on the bench that, I'm, that I've missed. Doesn't look like it. I think I'm pretty happy with that bench. And I'm going to go for that. And let's hope we can get a uh, res positive result today and uh, get ourselves a bit further up the table into more mid-table position, which is what I'm uh, hoping we end up in at the end of the season. We're going to go for a uh, our standard tactic of closing down all the major uh, attacking mid attacking midfield options. We're also going to close down the left back and right back in case they decide to uh, put some balls into the box um, if they if they're playing on overlap. So fingers crossed we can um, counter anything that they they throw at us. They might be playing counter attacking football, so we have to watch that watch that in the end. Hopefully our attacking uh, mindset will ensure that we uh, get in front of them. We'll be able to drop down to control as soon as the goal goes in. So. As we get underway, let's hope we get a uh, positive result today against our the team that we played last season in the league. Right, highlight for AFC Kempston here: Gallagher back to Ozier, the right back. Here's Doyle, but we've won back by well back by through ball up towards Bloomfield, who might play in Reed, but he's lost the ball out to Gallagher, uh, who might play it forward. But Fru's won it back, or, so, or it's a deflection off the uh, right, our right back. And here's Davidson. Uh, Mike f passes it to Utteridge up to Fru. Ball out to Carilla, who's got cr space to cross. And Williams has tapped it in. And it's 1 0 Histon inside 18 or inside 20 minutes. And it's a positive start for us. And as it stands, we move up to uh, 16th place in the league. Okay, here is the highlight. Fru with the ball out towards Carillo. Carillo has acres of space to cross the ball in. And Williams is there to win the header in front of his defender and heads it into the uh, left hand side of the net. That's another yellow card for Callum Frew. He's already been suspended, I think, three games because of his uh, yellow card disciplinary record. So, might have to change something there as we've got, as we've got a highlight for AFC Kempston. But they've given it away following a deflection off one of their players. And here is man in question, Frew, out to Reed, who might go past the uh, left back here. He has done. He's forced a number seven to come towards him. And here's Davidson up to Frew. He might pass it back towards uh, Utteridge, which he has done so. Ball out towards Carrillo. A bit of space on the left-hand side, but he's been closed down. Out to Dawkin, who plays it to Frew. Bloomfield is in, and it's a save by McDonald. And that was a chance to um, increase the lead there. That was our second clear-cut chance of the game. And here's the resulting corner. Frew puts the ball in, but it's cleared away by Auger, the right-back. And Frew has managed to skill his way through here. Here's Dawkin. It's taken a deflection, and it's out for another corner. So it looks like, in terms of the shots... We've had more on target. AFC Kempston has had the same number of shots than us, but they haven't managed to register a shot on target as of yet as we come up towards half-time. And there is the uh, half-time whistle. Let's just um, encourage the uh, team a little bit just to um, keep them motivated and ensure that we um, get that second goal. Because, of course, as I've mentioned before in other videos, we need to... Um, I'm never comfortable with a uh, one-goal lead. We kind of need to make it two just so that they will continue to, just so it's uh, it's more comfortable for us in the end. That's just a simple thing. And Mason, as Mason Bloomfield uh, commits a foul there, and that's the end of the highlights. All right, through with the corner, in towards uh, the mixer, but Ojo clears away. Through with another ball in, and it's well held by the goalkeeper, McDonald. And he will now clear it away, I think. But he's just cleared it straight out of play, possibly. But Miles has managed to pick it up. Puts the ball out towards Bloomfield, who's managed to get ahead of Clark. And he's hit the post, though. Oh, that, I don't know why that hasn't gone down as a clear-cut chance. But that was that's two chances that Bloomfield's had in the game. I might actually have to take him off because he hasn't had the grace of games. And I'm going to give, um, I think, Glider the uh, opportunity to uh, get back into uh, the swing of things. He did score in the last game against Natwich Town after coming on as a substitute. We are swapping uh, Ryan Williams around as well because Williams is good as an advance forward and Glider is good as a poacher. So we're going to go for that change and let's hope uh, we can get that second goal. Free kick for AFC Kempston which is hit straight into the wall by Broadbent. Back to McCart and George who's a substitute. Gierby to Kalu who's won, won well by Miles though and here's Reed on this right hand side. Puts the ball out towards Glider. Glider might cross the ball in and towards Williams and he has done so but Williams, the, their Williams has cleared it but it's gone back into... To Ryan Williams and he scored his second of the game and we are now 2-0 up. Let's hope that that should be the uh, end of the uh, match and we should have sealed all three points. It was a good clearance away but it was only as far as Reed and then Glider puts, drills the cross into the box and Williams is there with a tap in and scores his second of the game. I think we're going to make another substitution now. Reed's looking quite tired at the moment so I might uh, switch him around with Dawkin and bring on Justin May for the last 15-16 uh, minutes or so. 
Might also bring on a uh, Simeon May for uh, Alfie Davidson, but it looks like uh, Jack Utrecht is struggling as well with uh, fitness, so I might uh, take him off as well. He's looking motivated though, but I want to kind of rest him because we've got more games coming up in the not too distant future, and we need to uh, ensure we keep these players fit. Considering our uh, suspension record at the moment, we need to make sure that these uh, players are fit. As Steve Higgs comes on for. Uh, a cut for the last 13 minutes or so alongside, along with Justin May. A throw in by uh, AFC Kempston back out to Harris. There's a ball in towards Kalu and he's actually scored. It's a possible. It's they've KFC Kempston have pulled one back. Apologies, I lost my words there. But AFC Kempston are not out of this yet. It was a nice little ball in there, but we weren't able to um, track Kalu's run, and he's had left with a tap in, and he's now made it a uh, 2-1 to Histon. We need to kind of uh, shut up shop now with the last. Eight minutes or so of the game remaining. Entering into stoppage time now. It looks like we might be holding on for the uh, narrow 2-1 victory. I kind of wanted it to make it a little bit more secure, as I mentioned before. But as, based on the stats, it looks like we've had quite it's a quick, similar stats in the end. So it was we've had more clear-cut chances though. So I think we deserve to win this game. And there is the full-time whistle. We've managed to get a very important three points out of the out of that. But according to uh, Sparks, he's saying we fell short. Actually, I am going to be going to say that was a bit of a let off. Some of them play, looking a little bit demotivated. Oh, thanks for that, um, assistant manager. I probably should have said that was a good win. But oh well, I might uh, try and boost them up. Uh, do that maybe. Um, see if that makes any difference. Oops, I pressed the wrong button there. <sighs> Done. I've messed this up really badly here because I've got demotivations and motivations all over the place. I don't know what I've done there. I've completely messed that up, but in the end, we've managed to get the victory, and we're now up to 15th place in the league at the moment, with two and three games in hand over the teams above us and below us. All right, in terms of what game we're going to do next, I kind of want to do this Hereford game that was rearranged, but depending on what happens in the FA Trophy third qualifying round, we may end up having to do that match. It just depends on if we get through this particular game against Hampton and Richmond, who are currently sitting in the... Uh, near the bottom of the national of Vanarama, of the Vanarama South. And if we get through that, we may end up pulling a uh, one of the top non-league sides in the uh, national leagues, like we did with Dagenham and Redbridge in the, first, in the fourth qualifying round of the FA Cup. We'll just have to wait and see on that front, and I'll decide based on the results that we've managed to obtain. We've got a couple of um, big uh, league games coming up with Hayes and Yedding, another must-win game, I think, because, because of their league position being in 20th place, just outside the relegation zone. Barwell as well, who are away, who are in 14th. Uh, Oxford City, who are bottom of the league, and somehow we managed to lose to earlier on in the season. Chesham, who are not too far away from us. Dorchester as well. Dorchester as well. But I think Hereford might be a really interesting tie, considering they are currently sitting in 10th place, and they're not too far away from us in the league. I don't think. Um, yes, they're only three points behind, three points ahead of us at the moment. They have played the same number of games as us as well, so that could be a very interesting tie for us. So. I'm going to pencil that game in to be the um, the next live com, but depending on what happens in the FA Trophy, we may end up getting a uh, an interesting tie there. But it's all dependent on what happens here, to be honest. But I, if we don't get through that and we don't get a really good tie in the in the first round, then I will do the Hereford game in uh, late December, mid to late December of the twenty seven of twenty seventeen. So that's the end of the episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, we finally ended the uh, losing streak that we've been on on the uh, live com videos, so that's that's been all, that's always a positive. But if you guys enjoyed the episode, please leave a like, or comment, and subscribe. Also, comment to let me know on anything you can you can suggest to improve the overall series itself, or anything you want me to sh anything you guys want me to show. And I'll see you guys in the next episode, which will hopefully be the Hereford FC game, or whatever happens in the FA Trophy if we get a good tie in the first round if we get through this away game at Hampton and Richmond. So until then, I will see you guys later.